Hello everyone. In this 16th lesson of how to create your first game in Unity, we are going to create the ability to pause our game. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So, when we pause the game, the good thing is we're actually controlling time itself. And because we have our timer set up based on time itself within Unity, we don't actually have to do anything with it. It will automatically pause whenever we tell Unity to set the time to zero. So it's kind of handy in a lot of ways. So the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to create a script first, which will pause the game. After that, we are then going to design a quick little pause menu and apply everything together and make sure our game pauses. So let's start by creating the script. Let's right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this pause game. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So generally what we need to do is create um, an if statement to say, if we are pressing uh, the cancel button or escape as it's known, then we will be able to pause our game. If our game is already paused and we press it again, then we automatically unpause our game. So we just need to make sure that the, game, the script, I should say, knows whether we are paused or whether we are not. So to do this, let's start by creating two variables. One is going to be uh, that bool to check whether it is paused or not. The other is going to be our UI pause menu. So we don't need void start and annotations, they can go. We do, however, need the update method. So let's start by declaring the boolean as variable. So public, and it's gonna be bool, and we'll call it game paused. By default, we will make it equal to false. And the second variable is going to be a game object, which is going to be that pause menu that we will create. So public game object, and we'll call this pause menu. We are also going to deal with the music. However, the music is attached to the game object that this script will be attached to. So we don't need to declare that as a variable. We can easily access it. So in our update method, we now need to put an if statement to say, are we paused? Are we um, not? And also outside of that, we need to check if we are actually pressing the correct button. So we're gonna nest a couple of if statements here. So let's start by saying if input dot get button down, which is right there, and in brackets and quotes, the name of our button that we are trying to get here. And I will show you where this is, but by default, it's always called cancel. That's the escape key. So if this in is indeed your very first game in Unity, you won't have any problems typing this here. If you've changed things, like I say, I'll show you where they do get changed later on, then you may need to put a different word here. But generally, the word cancel will do the trick perfectly. So two close brackets there and open curly bracket. This is where we are now going to nest another if statement. This next section is going to check whether our game is paused or not. So we can put if, and in brackets, game paused equals false. So we're saying here, if the game isn't paused, then we set the time scale. So time dot time scale equals zero, semicolon. So what that's doing is basically freezing everything. So time runs at a constant of one by default in Unity, unless you change it. So zero and one are those absolute numbers that you use for either stop or go. Obviously you can change things to speed things up, slow things down a little bit, but we're not doing that here. We are just pausing and resuming the game. So time scale is zero. Next, we have to say that the game is paused. So game paused equals true, semicolon. And we are actually going to put the cursor as visible. So the reason being is because we're going to have buttons on our pause menu um, at, at some point 
probably this tutorial actually. Um, so we're going to need to be able to use our mouse. So we do need to put cursor dot visible equals true semicolon. Then what we're going to do is we are going to pause the music. And to do that, we need to reference the audio source that is on this game object that the script will be attached to, which is our globals object in the hierarchy. So we can put this dot get component in spiky brackets audio source right there. Open close bracket. And we are saying dot pause semicolon. That should be open close bracket semicolon. So we're saying get that component and pause it, which is all good. Next, we need to display that pause menu. And that's just a case of setting it active. So pause menu dot set active and in brackets true semicolon. So if we press our cancel button, the escape button, it will pause now. And obviously we now need to do the complete inverse of that. So we are going to need an else statement below it. So else open curly bracket and like I say, do the inverse in reverse order. So we can take this line, pause menu, set active. So let's set that as false. We then need to unpause the music. So we can take that line of code, place it here and put unpause. So the music will resume. We then need to have the cursor invisible again. So cursor.visible equals false. Game pause now becomes false once again because we have resumed. So game pause equals false. And the final thing to do is reset the time scale back to one and save the script. So creating a pause function in the game is really as easy as that. There's nothing special about it. All we're doing is detecting whether we are pressing the escape button and if it already is paused or not. So we can head back into Unity now and just let it compile. And there we go. Now, before we test this out, we are going to add in a quick little pause menu. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's have, let's have something different, shall we? Let's have a panel. Now a panel works in pretty much the same way as every other thing in uh, Unity's UI system. You can see it kind of covers the entire screen. We don't want it to cover the entire screen. We want it to be centered. And we want it to be well, as big as you want it, really. And it's, it's entirely up to you. So if we place it there and have a look at our game view, that will be our pause menu. So let's make it more than just a panel right now. Uh, let's have this as pause menu. And let's add a couple of things in there. Let's add some text. So let's right click on pause menu, go to UI, click on text. And we'll have this as paused. And let's have this anchored to the top. Zoom in a little bit. And let's have the font size as 30. Let's also have it white. And let's have it aligned to center. And let's bring that to there. So currently our pause menu looks like that. So now we're going to need a couple of buttons on there to say uh, resume game, restart, quit to menu. So Let's right click on pause menu again. Let's go to UI and let's go to button right there. Buttons are a little bit more complicated when it comes to UI. They're not as simple as um, just inserting some general UI. They require a little bit more to it. So buttons is probably going to be something we cover um, in the next video. Uh, for now, let's just click here on the button, click text, and we'll just call this resume game and let's hold control press d to duplicate that button let's bring it down a little bit and we will click on the arrow again and change the text to restart 
level. And we'll have one more button, which is going to be called quit to menu. So let's change the text on that one to say quit to menu. And let's quickly rename those buttons. We'll have that as resume, uh, restart, and we'll have that one as quit. And I'm going to close all them up, have a quick look at the game view. It's not perfect, but it will serve its purpose just for now until we really get into the bits of how buttons work and refining our pause menu. So let's have our pause game onto the global object. So drag and drop onto there. Let's also turn the pause menu off. Let's go back to globals and scroll down and you will see right here we have pause game script. So the pause menu object that we've just created becomes that variable. And now if we press play, so our game is indeed paused. We can't actually do anything. We can move our character around a little bit, but you'll notice that overall the time has indeed stopped. So the, everything that is rotating, they are still rotating because they are not directly linked to the time scale. So if we press escape again, our game does indeed carry on. So you can see everything is working as intended there. If you want your coins to stop rotating, then what you can do is if you go to coin rotation, for example, and we have rotate speed. Now to make them basically stop when time is stopped as well, because it does look a little bit silly as it is right now, all we need to do here is say multiplied by time dot time scale and save that script. And what that will do is make it so as if time is zero, then anything multiplied by zero is zero. So nothing will rotate here. So we can see this in effect when we press play and try pausing once again. There we go. So you can see now everything has stopped because don't forget we attach this script to these obstacles as well. So that's why they have also stopped. And there we go. Paused. Unpaused. So next uh, video, what we're going to do is we are going to delve a little bit more into our pause menu and we're going to get those buttons working. So I at least want to have the resume game button working and the restart level button working. We're going to tidy them up a little bit and see exactly how buttons work within Unity. So I hope to see you guys in that next video. Thank you very much for watching.